Welcome back to a brand new edition of All Things Honor. And yes, I did change from this morning just so it looks like I did not film in the same day. But the final episode before we head to final battle has now ended. And we have eight matches for tomorrow's card. Two more matches were announced. Don't really know why we didn't announce them on the episode, but we announced them after. Oh, well. I guess that's just Tony Khan's thing, but here we go. We are proving our way to final battle. So, we start off the episode with a Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship Proving Grounds match. This is one of three Proving Ground matches we saw, which by the episode is kind of called Proving Our Way, Proving Grounds. So funny. We had Eddie Kingston versus Evil Uno. So, first things first, it looks like Kingston will not be defending his title at final battle. Um, that is something that doesn't really make me the happiest. Final battle is known as Ring of Honor's biggest pay per view of the year. And your world champion isn't defending. And I get it, you know, the Connell Classic. I 100% understand that. But Kingston technically is still the Ring of Honor world champion. That's how he was introduced on tonight's episode, or last night's episode. It's interesting this on Friday, but still not very happy about that. I do love seeing the Dark Order used on Ring of Honor more. It should be a continued thing. Uno lasted for seven minutes out of the 10-minute time limit, which is one of the longer improvement grab matches we saw, but Kingston gets the win. Woohoo. <laughs> Next, we had Layla Hirsch versus Katrina Creed. And Canellas tried to help Hirsch take advantage in this match, similar to what happened last week. But, you know, Hirsch wasn't too happy about it. But Layla Hirsch does get the win, and Maria Canellas and Rachel Ellering did celebrate with her after the match was over. So it looks like we're kind of continuing the storyline here, where they're all, like, Maria's kind of fighting for the approval, but so is Ellering. We'll get into this more when we get to Rachel's match with Taya. Next, we have an Outrunners promo. So there's this huge four-way tag team title match. Um, the Outrunners say that after this match, they'll prove why they're the most dominant tag team in ROH. They say they're excited to get in the ring with three other great teams, but at the end of the day, they will be the victorious team. Cool. So... Next was our Pure Rules Championship Proving Ground match. We had Wheeler Yuta versus Jason Geiger. So Yuta also dominated most of this match. And the disappointing thing about the Pure Championship is the sudden ending, ending to Shibata's reign because he had to leave for Japan. Given last week's challenge with him and Danielson, I would have thought that he would have been in the fight with that honor match. But, you know, now it makes sense because before my article was published on BW Insider, you didn't have a match. Now he does have a match. He's wrestling Tom Lawler, which is so exciting because if you remember all the way back at Forbidden Door, Tom Lawler was supposed to be on the show, but he wasn't because of Adam Cole being sick. So now we get the chance to sign on Final Battle. That is so exciting for him. But... You know, they put Moxley, but now it makes sense. Um, Geiger had a good showing, but ultimately this was Yuta's night. There was no way that Yuta was losing. He he just won the title. <laughs> same, same thing as to why he will win tomorrow. He just won the title. Why is he going to lose it? Next, we had the Iron Savages. The entire Iron Savages versus Dalton Castle and the boys. I believe this was Jack Jameson's in-ring debut. I could be wrong, though. Because there was like a month and a half where I wasn't watching ROH TV. But... I'm going to assume this was his in-ring debut. Um, this match was more of just like a comedic match than anything else, but it was fun. And the main component of the match was the special sauce that fuels the Iron Savage and Jameson. They, they used it to hype themselves up. Castle was able to steal the sauce to fuel himself up to run through all three of his opponents. Castle pinned Jameson to get the win as he heads into the survival of the fittest match tomorrow. After the match was over, Johnny TV came out to confront Castle as the two exchanged words. Johnny hinted at coming down to the ring, but just walked away. The winners, obviously, Dalton Castle and the boys. So the other interesting thing was on the media call on Tuesday, Tony had said that they were going to announce the sixth competitor in the TV title match, but on Ring of Honor, ten, well, tonight as when I'm recording this, but tomorrow when you guys see it, they said they were going to announce it at the Bay Room. So I'm still going with Johnny TV. I think especially because they are feuding, it makes the perfect sense for it to be Johnny. If it's not Johnny, I'm going to assume it is going to be someone from New Japan. But, but you know, I also actually wouldn't mind if it was Leo Rush. Because why not? Let's just add to randomest things. So I'll go with Johnny, Leo Rush, or someone from New Japan. 
that is who I think it's going to be. And next we had a Butcher and a Blade promo. Butcher says that they have been going after money, but now they're looking for gold. Blade follows by saying that they are going to be the most dominant tag team in Ring of Honor, and they will win the big four-way tag match later on the night. Like I said last week, look, guys, they're still signed. That's the inside scoop that I proved by talking to their agent. <laughs> next, we had Rachel Ellering versus Taya Valkyrie. Canellis, along with Hirsch, came out for this match at Cheer on Ellering as Johnny came out with Valkyrie. This match got a lot of time, which I was really happy about. And it was a great back and forth between two veterans in the wrestling business. Valkyrie got the win as Canellis and Hirsch looked on in disgust. So I was actually really shocked that Taya got the win because I had assumed that, you know, if Layla won... Rachel would win but given what happened backstage this also made a lot of sense and I also wouldn't be shocked so as of right now is 10 34 on December 14th I would not be shocked if like on a zero hour we see like Taya versus Kiera because they hinted at that last week or maybe Rachel and Layla versus a woman's tag team of some sort don't be surprised if we get that if they're having a zero hour. <laughs> Next, we get an Ethan Page promo, and this promo was phenomenal. Um, Page says that he did not... So this, so this promo was filmed right after he lost to Kenny Omega on Collision, so that's very important to indicate, which I did not do in my review as I'm reading it back now. <laughs> Page says that he did not expect to get as being down as he did in his match with Omega, but he tried his best. He says that if it was not for Tony Nese, he would have had Ring of Honor gold to share with his daughter. He says that he cannot focus on the loss and the unfortunate defeat in his home country to Omega. He has to focus on Nese and make him say, I quit tomorrow. The only reason he lost to Omega was because of three seconds, where tomorrow, all he has to do is make Nese say, I quit, and he will not be the one to argue the words I quit. Nee storms into the locker room to confront Paige and the two shout at each other that one of them will say the words I quit. It is just a matter of who. Now go watch this. It was so good. It's maybe like a 90 second promo but that just sold me this match. Paige is on another level right now. You heard Tony said it on the media call. He chose to be in Ring of Honor. He said to Tony, hey, if you're not booking my AEW, put me on Ring of Honor. I want to get reps in. And this shows, just like Ring of Honor really made Athena, Ring of Honor is really going to make Ethan Page. And I'm excited to see where Ethan Page is a year from now, whether he's more featured on AEW or maybe he's Ring of Honor World Champion. Next, we had Griff Garrison and Cole Carter versus Bobby Sharp and Sean Moore. Uh, Moore and Sharp looked good and got more offense than I would have thought they would have. Garrison and Carter looked to have finally gone to the same page as they get the win in this one. It looks like Garrison is finally trusting Carter, which is really good to see. The Workhorse may have a promo next. Um, they say that since they are on a roll as of late, they are going to continue to do what they have been doing and win this match. They say failure is not an option, and they are going to show why they are the best team in Ring of Honor. Basically, all four teams cut the same exact promo just in their characters. <laughs> Next was Shane Taylor versus Channing Decker. This was a quick one. Taylor dominated the whole time and got the win, but at least Taylor adhered to the code of honor after the match. Obviously, this was more of, and we'll get into this with the overall review, this was more of like, um, Big Star versus Jobber type of episode. Really disappointed me. Next, we had the Righteous versus the Australian Takeover, and I've never heard of this team before, but I like them. Bring them here more. And I know like these um these tapings were filmed in Canada, but I like this team. They sh they should like bring them here more. I like them. Uh the Righteous also very heavily dominated this match. They've been on a roll in the second half of the year. You know, we know that they're teamed with Jake Roberts, except Jake Roberts has yet to be has has not been here. But I do hope that Tony Khan has big plans for them in twenty twenty four. The Infantry cut a promo next, um, and this was my favorite out of the four promos. So the Infantry says that the tag team division has been fishy between new teams showing up out of nowhere, old teams coming back to Ring of Honor, and tag teams not being here at all at the tag team champions. Uh, the one constant thing is the Infantry is here to stay. They also congratulate Lexi Nair on graduating from MIT as she salutes them, and Bravo yells at her not to do that. This was good. I liked this. Next, we had Brian Cage versus Gravity. This was a great contrast in style. Gravity tries to make the match at a faster pace his advantage while cage's strength always gets the better of gravity cage is one of the largest winning streaks on the male side of the ring of honor roster which i did not know until this episode and there was no way he was stopping here cage made gravity tap out in the middle of the ring and then celebrate his win with prince nada obviously we know that him alongside the gates of agony are wrestling tmdk tomorrow for the six man titles there there's no way they're losing the six man titles <laughs> the winner brian cage 
Next was the Rachel Ellering promo. So her said that even though she had a tough loss, Ellering did great. Canellis then praises Hirsch while also um, saying Ellering lost to local talent. Now remember, Rachel Ellering lost to Taya Valkyrie, who is a former WWE superstar, a former knockout women's champion, a former triple A women's champion. And Hirsch was the one that beat the local talent. I just thought that was really funny. Um, Hirsch says that Ellering will win her next match as she walks away with Maria. Maybe Hirsch and Ellering could get along after all. I think this is going to result in both of them turning on Maria sometime next year. But I like I like this. I like where this is going. Next, we had that four-way tag team match. And this match was really fun. Um, it was a great showing for all four teams. If only there were tag team titles for these teams to fight over, I'd be in a better mood about it. Butcher and Blade were able to keep their winning streak alive as they are hopeful to get a shot at the Ring of Honor tag team titles. I believe they are on a three-match winning streak. Maybe a four-match winning streak. But this was good. I like this. Keep doing this. And bring back our tag titles. Next, we had our main event, which I completely understand why this was the last segment, but I did not like it. So, essentially, it was the Ring of Honor Women's Championship Proving Grounds match. It was Athena versus Roxanne. Um, meaning that this was a quick match, I would have rather seen the tag, the Fatal 4-Way Tag match be the main event. I just thought it made more sense. But, like I said, meaning what happens with Starks made sense why this was the end. So, this match was literally 30 seconds. Athena knocked Roxanne out. After the match, Starks attacked Athena and took the fight to the champion. This is also where we see where Athena broke her nose. If you saw on social media, I believe it was last week, Athena was showing pictures of her nose all bruised and said it was broken. Starks literally slammed Athena's face on maybe three steel chairs and her nose basically exploded. There was blood everywhere. It was so brutal. And luckily, I think she's okay because she was doing media today. So I think she's okay. Um... So, obviously, like I said, blood to Athena breaking her nose, and Starks held the title high and proud to close the episode, which scares me, because Wrestling 101, if you're dominant on the go-home show, you'll lose at the pay-per-view. So, it scares me. And I, I've seen some theories here that Athena wins tomorrow, but it's Super Card of Honor is where Starks gets the win, but they do it in a fight without honor. But I can literally see between right now and when the pay-per-view, Tony making this a fight without honor. So, guess we'll see where we go from there. Overall, what really disappointed me about this episode was how many squash matches were on the episode. I understand building the bigger star to look strong going into the show but this was not the way to do it the main event was 30 seconds which was disappointing we've had weeks where the main event was early two minutes and hopefully tomorrow's show makes up for that so that is it that is our review of episode number 42 so that is it for me and i will see you all tomorrow when we review final battle 2023